Hi and welcome to Community Action Now brought to you by Eastern Nebraska Community Action Partnership. I'm your host Bryn Schimmel and it is July 2022. Um, today we are going to talk about a few things. We have some really fun guests and our first guest is Michael Griffin. Now Michael is the Community Health Programs Manager at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Um, so, Michael, if you would tell me a little bit about you first. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael. So, I was born in Kansas City, but, you know, I graduated here, so I identify as a native Omahaan. And so, I'm really passionate about community-centered approach towards solving problems that impact our health adversely. And so, that includes issues of race, issues of class, but I guess the fundamental goal is to involve community at every level of the process. And so too often you see health officials go into communities acting as though they have the answers, acting as though the community members don't have autonomy or intellect that we can learn from. And so at UNMC, I work in the Center for Reducing Health Disparities. And so the main goal of that is to reduce disparities in our North Omaha community through programming, research endeavors, and evaluation work. So I help lead that charge. Cool. Um, so the Center for Health Disparities, or for Reducing Health Disparities, I'm sorry, that's part of the College of Public Health. Um, when was that created? Kind of how did the center come about? Yeah. So I should also say I am new. So I'm not sure. <laughs> sorry, I put you on the spot a little bit <laughs> No, there. no problem. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure. But I can paint a little better picture yeah. about the structure of UNMC just okay. because a lot of folks don't know about it, that don't work there. Yeah. I mean, mostly everyone is familiar with UNMC here in Omaha, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I had no idea that there was a Center for Reducing Health Disparities. So yeah, absolutely. Totally. Yeah, so we have UNMC as the overall school, and then there are different schools underneath that, so like med school, public health school, et cetera. And then under public health, there's a program that's called Health Promotion. Okay. And so that is where our center is. And so it is a relatively new part of UNMC, yeah. um, although I don't know the exact date. That's okay. Yeah. Um, tell me about uh, some of the programs that you do through the center. Yeah, definitely. So a cornerstone of all work is collaboration, both with community as well as different institutions. And so a big program that I'm helping with is called Generation Exchange. And so that's a partnership with UNMC as well as NCAP. Which we're going to talk more about. <laughs> and the goal of that is to have two generations help each other with reduced health disparities and improved learning. And so we have a great group of adult mentors and they are essentially teacher assistants for classrooms that have uh, academic barriers in mm -hmm. OPS. And so the goal with this program is that we have students that have improved academic performance and we have mentors that have improved health outcomes. So two for the price of one. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I do have, we'll talk more about Generation Exchange specifically. Sure. Um, what kind of things are you working on? Um, I know you're fairly new, but what kind of programs are you hoping to get started? Yeah, so I am really passionate about improving community access and participation with culture as okay. a conduit for that. All right. Think about how many folks know every song to every lyric, everything from a movie. You know, they see themselves and their cultural practices. Right. And so for me personally, I'm really passionate about making programs that have art and culture emphasis. Because if we think about it, there's mass participation. Yeah, in absolutely. Art. absolutely. And so how can we have that same mass participation by reinstating trust in the health system? And so I like to have programs that really speak to those values. Very cool. Thanks. Um, what has been kind of your favorite part of the job so far? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say community relationship building. In the past, I've done outreach work, but with outreach work, it's more, hey, everyone, be healthy. All right, never see you again. Right, sure. <laughs> really important. One-offs. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, what I really enjoy is actually program implementation. Yeah, so more long-term partnerships. With community members. Cool. Uh, folks that we'll see later on the show, we've met once a week for six months. <laughs> yeah. So I really enjoy how the work of relationship building 
also positively impacts my life. You know, I'm from North Omaha, and right. so I'm meeting mentors that I've seen from afar, but now at a more professional capacity, so it's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you said the Center for Reducing Health Disparities um, focuses mostly on the North Omaha area. Is that correct or so, not quite? Totally. Okay. So the Center for Reducing Health Disparities focuses on reducing health disparities of community members. A lot of times with research endeavors, it's like, let's get published. Right. That's the primary goal. Sure. But that's not the primary goal in this department. And so I'm from the North Omaha site. That's near 52nd and Ames, okay. the Omaha home for boys. And you said Dr. Kiana King is the head of that site. Definitely. Okay. Yep, Dr. Kiana King is the head of the site. And so our focus is North Omaha. Got it. Okay. So there are different sites within the center. So we actually have the only non-UNMC site okay. in North Omaha. Okay. But there are different teams within the Center for Reducing Health Disparities that focus on South Omaha. Okay. But they're still housed and doing research sure. out of the main UNMC campus. Okay, got it. Um, so we're going to put up on the screen uh, information on if people are looking for services or assistance, how they would be able to get a hold of you guys. Sure. Um, but let's shift a little bit then to Generation Exchange. So we, for anyone who doesn't know, so you kind of explained it, um, the program originated in Los Angeles uh, where they used you know, senior members of the community in, I think it's K through three classrooms, right? Mm -hmm. um, as kind of mentors and this just whole really cool program was born. Um, so we brought it, we brought it to Omaha. Uh, were you part of the team that went out to LA? No, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't either. Um, but so we had um, our executive director, I think at NCAP went out and I think Dr. King, um, went out and observed and brought back this idea to do this. And how are you, so you've kind of been given charge of that program, <laughs> right? Yeah. So how are you feeling about it so far? We did um, like a soft, not a soft opening, but um, kind of like a trial run at the end of the school year, right? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. How are we feeling about things? I love it, yeah. personally. Um, so a little about me, mm -hmm. I was raised by my mom and my grandmother. So I've always had a very strong connection with folks that are a bit older than me. And so it's really great to, to really give credibility to that knowledge, right. that insight. And so you, you spoke to the soft rollout. And so that was the trial run to really make sure that we have our T's crossed and our I's dotted. And that was just a month, a month and a half. Okay. And then we're starting the full rollout, which is the school year. And what was really cool about the soft rollout is that the mentors helped us evaluate the program in real time. And so not only were they a part of it, but statements that they made in the evaluation process will help guide how we create the full run through. And so to me, that's revolutionary to use institutional resources that are molded by mentors. Yeah. You know, and I think that's pretty revolutionary. Um, and also, I'm really excited about having different types of institutions partner. Yeah. You know, with Generation Exchange, we have UNMC. We have NCAP, and we also have OPS schools. And so it's been a great learning experience. Uh, it's really relevant when we talk about integrated care and making sure that we really are holistic with care that we give. Yeah. And so it's been beautiful to see in this program how that's reflected with diverse, dynamic partnerships. Yeah, that's amazing. So um, for the soft rollout, were you only in one school? So we did Lothrop Elementary, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and we spoke with uh, Melita, with their principal last right. week. And what is the plan for the fall? How many schools are um, we looking to have this program in? Right, so the plan is to have a solid foundation before we try to build the chimney. Sure. And so for this fall, we're actually having the same number of mentors, okay. the same school, but it's going to be for the full academic calendar, okay. as opposed to uh, a month or two. Sure. Because what makes this program really unique is that it's a research program as well. We're still measuring if health improves during the program. Right. So we need a longer length of time. And then we're planning to move to further OPS schools along the road, but slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. So for the full school year, um, it's two days a week, or do they split their hours up however they would like to? It's 10 hours a week, correct? Right. So each mentor commits 10 hours a week to the same classroom. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it gives them, you know, something to do. Uh, it gives them a place to kind of share uh, all the things that they know and work with the kids. So it's really, I think it's really awesome um, on both sides, you know, for teachers to have extra help in the classrooms, for the kids who love it, um, you know, and for our mentors who also seem to really enjoy it so far. Um, we are looking at, um, do we have mentors, the full set of mentors for the school year, or are we still looking for volunteers? Yeah, so the timeline now is to have Menelusa, wait, sorry, have Lothrop this fall okay. for the full academic calendar. Okay. And then we're making plans to branch towards Menelusa. Yes. And then begin that in the spring of 2023. And so we are still recruiting mentors for that cohort. Awesome. And if um, you are interested in being a mentor or in supporting um, this program in any way, how could people do that? Yeah, so I'd say be connected to NCAP and just keep your head on the swivel. We are recruiting. And so follow us on social media, all yeah. the plugs. Right, right. Uh, and there are also a lot of opportunities, as you know, uh, at NCAP for mentors outside of Generation Exchange. Yeah, absolutely. So, Everyone wins if they get connected to NCAP. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here and talking to us about Generation Exchange. Um, we are super excited for the big rollout in the fall. If you want to get involved, we have all the information up on the screen. And we will take a quick break and come back. Thank you. Where can you watch KPAO Community Television? You know, the channel with all of the local shows. If you live in the Omaha area, Cox Channel 22 HD is your place. If you prefer streaming, go to kpaotvomaha.org. And now, if you have the Apple TV box, grab our app and watch us there. KPAO, on cable, streaming live, and now on Apple TV. Welcome back to Community Action Now. I'm your host, Bryn Schimmel. And for the second half of our show, we have our friend Kat, who is the Senior Wellness Supervisor at NCAP, um, who we've had on before to do some exercising. Um, and then we have Mr. Cliff Robbins, who is one of our Generation Exchange mentors. Um, and we're gonna talk, again, more about Generation Exchange. Uh, Kat, Tell us a little bit about your job at NCAP first. Sure, I am the Senior Wellness Supervisor at NCAP. So um, I <clears throat> have a, a class of about 10 to 15 seniors that come out to NCAP and exercise regularly. Um, we also do field trips, um, anything that we can get them out of their house and engaging with each other and also uh, working on their um, physical activity, uh, that we, that's what we do. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, we'll just start right with Generation Exchange. You know, Michael um, kind of gave us the basics of the program. What made you want to partner with UNMC to do this? Um, it was a very easy partnership because of uh, the office that they work in. Um, right. They are out to obviously benefit the community in any way they can when it comes to um, um, health disparities in the Omaha area. Right. So, which there are. Which there are a lot of. Um, so for them looking at the older adult population and seeing how we can benefit their health, but also simultaneously looking at the um, school districts in the area um, to see how we can also benefit, benefit the educational um, outcomes for the students. So we talked a little bit about um, kind of the soft rollout that we did with Lothrop Elementary, which is a Omaha public school. And that went fairly successfully. Um, Cliff, why don't you tell us about your experience at Lothrop uh, this spring? Tell us what you did. Well, it was uh, an amazing experience. Uh, I was a mentor to a class of second graders. And I think my first uh, couple of days, it was horrifying. <laughs> Uh, being in a classroom with these uh, students and all of the, the energy level. And times are a little had. bit different. Uh, yes, very, <laughs> very much different mm. from when 
I was a student at Lothrop Elementary School. Oh, okay. Uh, longer uh, ago than I care to mention. <laughs> so you're a native Omahan as well then? Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, I uh, attended Lothrop Elementary School and it was uh, a, a very warm and uh, uh, enriching experience for me in that uh, kindergarten through the sixth grade. I never missed a day of school. I was never tardy. <laughs> I kind of liked school. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, that's where all my friends were, you know. That's where I went to not only learn, but to have fun. Right. So. so what, is that part of what attracted you to be part of the Generation Exchange program? Well, because I, uh, I knew that uh, it was going to be uh, focused at uh, Lothrop, and I've got a long history uh, with that school in that uh, not only was I a student there and my uh, two younger brothers, but uh, I have a cousin who uh, was at one time the assistant principal there, and uh, my mother, who is uh, currently age 95, she had a career and after her retirement from her first career, she was recruited to go to uh, Lothrop to, be, to actually do very similar to what I'm doing now. And uh, she worked another 22 years amazing. there at, at Lothrop. And, That's fantastic. Uh, she loved it. That's amazing. Yeah. What cat um, do you think has been the best part so far of the Generation Exchange program? I know it's still early. I think just seeing the excitement um, in the seniors uh, when they they can kind of see the little bit of engagement and a little bit of connection that they're making with the students. It's been a very short rollout. It was only about a month and a half, and they were just so excited to be there. So, and you have a background, you know, in health and wellness. So, what are some of the uh, benefits that? Generation Exchange has seen so far, I know we're still tracking data, yes. um, but what are some of the things that we've seen so far and maybe some of the hopes that we have going forward as far as um, an increase in positive positivity? Sure, um, so those health outcomes, that obviously the LA team were the first to see those. Um, we, again, the data is not all collected, but we definitely would like to see an improvement in their overall physical health. Um, their um, cognition, um, and then obviously through the social engagement, um, social interactions that they're making as well, um, you know, getting them out of isolation and getting right. them working around other people um, and just keeping them young, working with the students. So all of those are outcomes we would love to see. And kind of like we discussed with Michael, the hope is to, you know, grow and expand a little mm -hmm. bit, get into yes. more schools. Yes. Um, and I know that you are excited about that. Yes. I know that, um, so the current principal at Lothrop mm -hmm. is moving yes. to Minnelusa. And so she wants to though continue the program. And so we're hoping to get more mentors and all of that in place and really grow. Right, yeah, recruitment's definitely starting. Um, so if anybody's interested, definitely <laughs> yep. we'll, reach out. We'll put all that information up on the screen <laughs> Yes. Um, for anyone that's interested or wants to get involved. Cliff, what has been your favorite part of being in the program just for that short time? Well, I think it's the engagement with the students and with the, the teacher. Uh, I... Uh, told the teacher that I uh, was uh, assigned uh, with, that uh, she remind me, uh, reminded me of uh, John Wayne <laughs> because she had true grit. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's been a rough couple of years for teachers. <laughs> very, very mm -hmm. challenging, you know, with the students spending a whole year of uh, remote learning. Right. And then to return to that classroom setting, uh, you know, it presented them with uh, uh, certain challenges. And uh, I thought that uh, I would go into this uh, uh, activity and I would be able to impart uh, all of my uh, 
acquired wisdom and knowledge with these uh, young minds. Of course. But I quickly learned that uh, I actually had more to learn from them <laughs> than I think that they may have had to learn from me. Uh, and it was uh, very, very uh, enjoyable. I, I, I loved it. Good. You're doing it in the fall again? Absolutely. I asked you on the spot. You have to say yes, obviously. <laughs> I'm sure that there are many, you know, I used to work for a school district, and I know that uh, kids are fun and unpredictable and outspoken, and they surprise you every day. Uh, what kind of, do you have any stories that like stand out to you um, from just that month with the kids? Well, uh, one of the uh, activities that uh, the teacher uh, engaged in with the students was to uh, show them through uh, the, an approach to uh, sciences uh, what uh, could be created by using uh, heat and or cold. Okay. And there was a video that uh, they had uh, one uh, day in class and it was uh, how uh, to very simply make uh, some homemade ice cream. And so when I was a child, it was an activity that took place uh, in my family quite a lot. So uh, I spoke to the principal first and asked uh, if I could have permission to make homemade ice cream for the students. And she said, well, they would have to earn it. And so I presented them with that challenge uh, probably about uh, five weeks before the end of the school year. Uh, they were very uh, enthralled and excited and accepted the challenge. <laughs> I, I don't know uh, how successful they were, <laughs> but uh, I was committed to uh, make homemade ice cream for them, and I engaged all of them in the process. And uh, at the end of the school year, matter of fact, the next to the last day of school, uh, we had a classroom plus a few extra teachers who enjoyed uh, the homemade ice cream. And I think that it's something that will stay with them uh, for some time to come. Who knows, in the fall, they may approach me. <laughs> they might. You might be in charge <laughs> of again. ice cream now every year. <laughs> who knows? You might have to think of something that you can make in the fall months for them to work towards. Maybe some candied apples or something. There you go. <laughs> Um, you know, COVID had, we, all, we talk about this all the time, COVID had such a big impact on everything, on nonprofits, on schools. Um, Generation Exchange was actually a program that NCAP and UNMC were looking at um, starting pre-COVID, and then mm -hmm. um, it kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And so we are really, really excited to finally be rolling it out and getting involved um, with the schools. So we're so happy to have you, Cliff, and you know all of the mentors spending time with the kids. Um, I'm sure that they love it. I'm sure that the teachers appreciate the extra help. Um, and we're just so grateful for all the involvement uh, from you guys and from other community members. And I know that we are just super excited for the fall. Yes and to do the full program. We're really looking forward to everything. And, you know, maybe we'll have to have you guys come back at the end of next year as we continue to kind of track um, improvements and we'll just have to have you talk about how the next school year goes. That sounds great. <laughs> I'd be happy to do so. Well, thank you both so much for being here. And if anyone wants more information on Generation Exchange or on NCAP or on the University of Nebraska Med Center's um, College of Public Health, the Center for Health Disparities, make sure to get in touch with us. We're going to put all of the social media tags up. And as always, thank you to everyone for tuning in and for helping us keep people safe, fed, and housed. We'll see you next time.